hide your goats and mind your heads because we're in Saudi Arabia. All right, woo, yeah. The Bloodline, biggest wrestling angle of the decade. For more than a year now, main event Jey Uso has been doing his own thing, largely away from Roman Reigns and the gang. The last few months have planted the seeds for a reunion. Cool. What will Jimmy Uso and Roman Reigns do to earn Jey Uso's forgiveness? What will it take? Well, not much. Not much at all. Because instead of building to a reunion in time for Survivor Series and an epic War Games match, the oil tycoons probably told Triple Nose they wanted Reigns and the Usos reforming on their giant, glorified house show instead. Great. So now Roman Reigns is saying yeet, and fingers are thrown up, and the hell Jey Uso went through all decade has been forgiven just because he lost his Intercontinental Championship. Triple Nose normally books things at a snail's pace, so we'll cut him some slack and say this rushed mess of storytelling was likely him with his hands tied. The match itself was what you'd expect from the bloodline at this point. A lot of storytelling, a lot of character work, nothing that special work rate-wise unless Jacob Fatu was in the ring, and a big angle post-match that largely overshadows the action. Solo Sokoa pinning Roman Reigns is kind of wild, and again, probably should have been saved for a bit later, but it's good news for the Team U bloodline to pick up a big win like this. Sami Zayn came running out, cheered for by the Saudi crowd, which would have been wild just a few years ago. Basically, that fan theory everyone had the moment Solo Sokoa took over the bloodline, that it would lead to Roman and the old crew taking on Solo and the new crew at Survivor Series is almost definitely happening, but now a little bit of the toothpaste has been squeezed out of the tube already. Because you just don't have to be a fortune teller to see where Triple Nose's plotting, predictable booking is going multiple months in advance. Too much. Too soon. After a slow burn for so long. Bit of a mess that highlighted how past its prime the whole bloodline angle has become. If this leads to the Ruck versus Roman Reigns actually happening next year, awesome. Otherwise, might be time to start wrapping this up. Now look, on a side note, isn't it curious how men are allowed to walk out in their undies here, but women must be mummified covered from head to toe. Why is it that half-naked men is so acceptable in Saudi Arabia? Arabia, whoops, sorry. But women showing skin is the worst thing since goats started blowing assault whistles. Well, I think we all know the answer. Shocking. I'm shocked. And isn't it just so, let's say, Awkward, the vibe you get when these big sports and entertainment events stumble on over to Saudi Arabia for that sweet, sweet blood money. Every prestigious boxing event now does it go to Wembley, Madison Square Garden, Las Vegas. No! Riyadh, actually, in a vain doomed hope that we will all just somehow forget so many of Saudi Arabia's just charming contributions to the world over the years. But everyone just pretends it's just all good and dandy so long as those sweet paychecks blow on in. A while back, both John Cena and Daniel Bryan vowed never to return to Saudi Arabia after the <clears throat> mysterious death of a journalist. Fair enough. But what about all the other deaths? What about Yemen? Because these guys were happy to perform there before that one unfortunate incident got some media traction, and they used it to try and look like big brave heroes all of a sudden. But hey, 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 whatever. If the People's Republic of China don't want their guy, John China, going there, he won't go there. Oh, this has gone a bit off the rails. So look, 
the main event, Gunther versus Cody Rhodes. Turn back the clock to Royal Rumble 2023. These two had some great exchanges as the final two of the 30-man match. And that was a real Royal Rumble. It wasn't like greatest Royal Rumble or any of that nonsense. Ever since, people have wondered when an actual program would happen between these two. Well, wonder no more, because a tacky nothing belt no one asked for that immediately makes the loser of this match's world title look worthless has thrown these two together out of the blue. Ha! <laughs> just wonderful. This is just the gift that keeps on giving. And speaking of worthless, the new World Heavyweight Championship has had an uphill battle to become prestigious. Decent tournament last year led to Seth Rollins winning it and having a, a fairly pedestrian title run. Blink and you'll miss it. Drew McIntyre held it for a few minutes. And then Damian Priest had a butch-laden title run and, ironically, only actually got over and really worth pushing to the main event after losing it. Funny how that goes sometimes. Now look, Gunther is a very good wrestler. There's this hate he gets in some circles now for working an old school, sometimes kind of ugly style. But in this day and age of endless acrobatics and video game sequences, having a mean surly bruiser chopping people and choking them out and actually having some ring psychology is a nice change of pace. A win here would have helped both Gunther and his title seem more legit. On the flip side, for some reason, Cody Rhodes is the face of WWE now, I don't know why, and a loss could have risked making his title run, something the company built to you for two years. Look a little bit second rate. This was a booking no win. No win! For a hideous belt so tacky, even Lil Jon would say, hey, 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 that's a bit much, guys, come on now. The match itself was very good. It was well paced. It was crisp. The selling was decent. Rhodes knows how to play a plucky, old school babyface in the ring. Gunther, he has a bit of the Terry Gordys about him when it comes to being a mean bully heel. So they played off each other quite well. The finish protected Gunther a bit. It made Rhodes look crafty rather than super Cena esque, which was absolutely the right call. Ultimately, though, good as this was, it was largely wasted and could have been a much, much bigger deal down the road. For now, Cody Rhodes probably goes back to the Randy Orton, Kevin Owens thing. Gunter, meanwhile, has CM Punk. He has Seth Rollins, and maybe he has Goldberg to contend with. Beating some, or preferably all, of those guys ought to restore some credibility for both him and, maybe even more importantly, the title he holds. Anyways, for the show overall, Seth Rollins versus Bronson Reed was really good. Hard hitting, fast paced. Even in defeat, Reed looked like a menace. Rollins busted out the super stump, which is always a worrying one for anyone who saw Psycho Sid's one legged jump catastrophe back in the day. The aftermath suggested a rematch is on the way, and if they want Reed's recent success, the first time he's really been over, ever and they want that crowd heat to keep going. It's very simple, he needs to win that rematch. Of course, Seth Rollins is a leading star just back from injury, so too much looking at the lights isn't ideal for him either. Rollins, who is still sadly a bit of a goof, has still shown a bit more fire and intensity since coming back than he has in quite a long time. More of that, and less of the Elton John and Sam Smith fashion homages would be nice. Liv Morgan versus Nia Jax was silly, it was overbooked, but Morgan winning was a pleasant surprise. One would think, with the big looming shadow of Dwayne Johnson's eyebrow, that Nepo Jax would have won this. Liv Morgan might not be Manami Toyota, or whoever the hell, in the ring, but she's a good promo and a decent heel who's really having probably the best run of her career right now. Randy Orton versus Kevin Owens, the men who became friends through their respective failures to win a mid-card title off of a pig-abusing, dog-abusing, whore-marrying, suicide-forest-mucking, 
selling moldy food to kids and crypto scams to adults, piece of satanic human garbage, earlier this year. Way to make them both look like complete jabronis. Randy Orton is a legend of the business. Kevin Owens is okay. This match looked good on paper, and the story of Owens's total meltdown has been fairly compelling so far. No match though, false advertising. Instead, we got a weird, but in fairness very dramatic brawl that ended with Owens attempting to murder Randy Orton via railing jump. Really good angle for what it was, but advertising a match that doesn't happen is never a good look, especially for a PLE. The other women's match. Bianca Belair and Jade Cargill won, which is not good, because Bianca Belair used to be the ace of the WWE women's division, and her star power has been cut in half this year in the doubles division. Not much to say about this match. I would have enjoyed it a lot more if Jakara Jackson and Io Sky were wearing less than half of what they were wearing here. And I'm not sorry to say that. Alright, so let's wrap this up. LA Knight is awesome. He's got charisma. He's jacked. Sure, he's no prime Bret Hart between the ropes, but so what? He has everything to be a top-line sports entertainer. And there is nothing wrong with that. He really should be in the world title picture again before it is officially too late. But for now, his US title run has been all right. Andrade rules between the ropes. Fantastic work rate for all you smarks out there. It's just a pity he seemingly can't speak a single language on earth coherently. Carmanlet Hayes, I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. He sucks. The man looks like a jacked middle grader. His promos are awkward. He butchers quite a lot. Give it a few years and he will be the Genetti by a country mile of him and Trick Williams. So, from start to finish, this actually was an entertaining fun show. Don't let the title fool you. It was not that bad at all. Great efforts from the talent involved and awesome camera work too. One of the absolute best things about the Paul Levesque era is that WWE is now nicely shut and smartly edited rather than six billion cuts per minute. The nonsense Kevin Dunn used to beat us over the head with. The one problem is that, creatively, this show has potentially hampered a major angle and a world champion, neither of which should have happened. These Saudi shows, they often feel like a parallel universe to the usual WWE, but this one was especially bad for messing with the promotion's top storylines and performers right now. Let us just hope those truly, truly hideous titles aren't carried around everywhere for the next few months.